Hello students. Now as we all know pharmacokinetics is a study of administration, distribution, metabolism and excretion of drug by the body. In this video we will try to understand the concept of volume of distribution. And this video is sixth in the series of videos on pharmacokinetics. Now volume of distribution determines extent of drug distribution in the body. So volume of distribution determines distribution of drug in the vascular tissue and in the extravascular tissue. Now very important, important to understand that vascular tissue refers to the blood while extravascular tissues are the tissues other than the blood present in the body. So a drug is distributed in the blood that is vascular tissue and also in other tissues that is extravascular tissues. Uh, these are the tissues present throughout the body. So volume of distribution predicts how much of the drug will be confined to the blood and how much of the drug will be distributed to the extravascular tissue. Now look at this figure. Now when a drug is administered, it is absorbed in the bloodstream. Now this blood, it circulates throughout the body and thus the drug is distributed from the plasma to the body tissues that is to the extravascular tissues including the site of action of the drug. Uh, now let's uh, define volume of distribution. Volume of distribution represented as VD is a pharmacokinetic parameter that relates total amount of drug in body to the concentration of drug in the plasma. Now volume of distribution is a theoretical concept and volume of distribution is a ratio between total amount of drug in the body to plasma concentration of a drug. Now let's understand this with the help of an example. Let's say 100 milligram of a drug is administered by intravenous route. That is 100 milligram of drug is injected in the bloodstream. So total amount of drug present in the body is 100 milligram. Now after some time, that is when the drug has been distributed and an equilibrium has been attained, a blood sample is withdrawn and concentration of drug in the plasma is determined. Let's say the concentration of drug in the plasma is 4 milligram per liter. So volume of distribution is 100 milligram divided by 4 milligram per liter that comes out to 25 liter. So volume of distribution here is 25 liters. Now volume of distribution predicts extent of drug distribution in the body. That is how much of drug will remain in plasma and how much of the drug will be distributed to the extravascular tissues. Now very important to remember that drug distribution is a highly uneven concept. It is uh, drug distribution is highly uneven in the body because different tissues have different affinities to the drugs. Uh, there are a number of factors on which distribution of a drug depends. Uh, now let's try to understand the concept of a volume of distribution with the help of figures. Now look at this figure. Now this figure represents tissues present in the body. Now body is composed of vascular tissue and extravascular tissue. Now vascular tissue is the blood plasma which is shown here in the red color. Well the extravascular tissue is the tissues other than the blood in the body shown here in the light yellow color. Now when the drug is administered, it is absorbed in the blood and from the blood it is distributed to the extravascular tissues. Now drug molecules here are shown in the green color. Now this figure depicts drugs with high volume of distribution. Now as shown in the figure, concentration of drug is much less in the plasma. Uh, this is the concentration of drug. So concentration of drug uh, in the plasma is very less compared to the concentration of drug in the extravascular tissue. That means there is more distribution of the drug in the extravascular tissue. So the drug has high volume of distribution. Now uh, example of a drug with high volume of distribution is the chloroquine. Chloroquine has a volume of distribution of 15,000 liters. Chloroquine is highly lipophilic. 
it is a lipid soluble drug it easily passes through the cell membrane and it is sequestered in the body fat that means uh, once it uh, crosses the cell membrane once it reaches the uh, adipose tissue it hides in the adipose tissue and thus drugs with high volume of distribution remains largely confined to the extravascular tissues for example digoxin morphine propranolol etc now look at this figure now as it is clear from the figure the drug is largely confined to the blood plasma and there is little drug in the extravascular tissue so this drug has a low volume of distribution now example of a drug with a low volume of distribution is heparin its volume of distribution is 8 liters now heparin has a low volume of distribution because it's a drug that is highly bound to plasma proteins that means it is highly bound to the proteins which are present in the plasma so it remains largely confined in the blood plasma it is not uh, widely distributed in the extravascular tissues so drugs with low volume of distribution remain largely confined to the blood plasma for example insulin warfarin streptomycin gentamicin etc uh, now let's study factors regulating volume of distribution now first factor is the binding of drug to proteins now proteins are found in plasma like for example albumin and albumin is termed as a plasma protein while the proteins are also found in the tissues now some drugs show affinity to plasma proteins while other drugs bind to tissue proteins now many acidic drugs for example warfarin aspirin are highly bound to plasma proteins they are highly bound to albumin so these drugs they largely remain confined to the plasma they are not distributed in uh, in the extravascular tissues and therefore they exhibit low volume of distribution whereas many basic drugs like for example amphetamine meparadine are extensively bound to tissue proteins and therefore they are extensively distributed in the extravascular tissues and therefore they exhibit a large volume of distribution now second important uh, factor responsible for the volume of distribution is the lipid solubility of drug now as we all know that cell membranes are made up of phospholipids so lipid soluble drugs easily pass through the cell membranes and lipid soluble drugs are widely distributed in the extravascular tissues whereas water soluble drugs do not pass through the cell membrane and they remain confined to the blood plasma so hydrophilic drugs do not pass through lipid bilayer and they exhibit low volume of distribution they remain confined they remain largely confined to the blood for example gentamicin streptomycin whereas lipophilic drug lipid soluble drugs they pass through the cell membranes they are widely distributed in the extravascular tissues and therefore they exhibit high volume of distribution for example thiopentone a third factor responsible for the volume of distribution is the molecular size of drug now as we all know that when a drug is absorbed in a blood uh, in the blood it is a blood that supply drug to the body tissues by the capillaries now large molecule uh, large molecular size drugs they cannot pass through the pores of capillaries and therefore they remain confined largely confined to the plasma and therefore they show a uh, low volume of distribution so uh, let's study this with the help of example heparin has a large molecular size it cannot pass through the capillary fenestrations it cannot pass through the pores of the capillaries and therefore it remains largely confined to the plasma and exhibit low volume of distribution on the other hand small molecular size drug for example ethanol it passes through the capillaries it passes through the uh, pores of the capillaries and uh, it exhibit a volume of distribution of around 30 liters and it is distributed in the total body water that is in the total body fluids 
Now, uh, the next important factor determining volume of distribution is the degree of ionization of a drug. Now, very important to remember that highly ionized drugs are hydrophilic. That means they do not cross the cell membrane. Therefore, they, uh, they, uh, largely, they are largely confined to the plasma. Whereas the non-ionic drugs are lipophilic, they easily cross the cell membranes and therefore they are widely distributed in the extravascular tissues. So highly ionized drugs, for example, gentamicin, neostigmine, exhibit low volume of distribution. On the contrary, non-ionic uh, non drugs like digoxin, fantanyl pass through the phospholipid cell membrane and uh, exhibit a high volume of distribution. Now let's talk about the clinical significance of volume of distribution, uh, the importance of uh, studying volume of distribution. Now volume of distribution can be used to determine loading dose so as to achieve required plasma concentration of the drug. Second is in the case of drug poisoning. Now if a drug has low volume of distribution, uh, the drug will remain confined uh, to the blood and thus uh, the drug can be easily removed by the process of uh, dialysis. So, uh, volume of distribution helps in predicting effectiveness of dialysis in the treatment of drug poisoning. Now, even though a volume of distribution is a very important pharmacokinetic parameter, it also has limitations as it provides limited information on the pattern of drug distribution. It cannot give information about the specific pattern of drug distribution that is the exact location or the specific tissues where the drug is present. So this is in brief on you know, the concept of volume of distribution. If you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.